Okay, so today we're going to be discussing lighting and how to light a scene. Um, this is a, a little bar um, project that I was working on recently for a client. Um, so this should work pretty well as far as just showing you how the lighting works and how I go about doing lighting in different scenes. So basically the way I go about lighting I do essentially two layers of lighting and then sometimes a third layer as well. Um, the first layer being your kind of overhead cam lighting. Uh, you can find all of that if you go to components, load family, under the lighting tab, <coughs> excuse me, architectural, internal, and there are all sorts of lights that are already built into Revit. The recess cam light works pretty well. Um, they also have, I would, in almost every project that I do, I use the recess cam light as well as the studio light. Depending on what you're shooting for, uh, I've also used the up light at times um, as well as the down light under cabinet light uh, is real handy for kitchen cabinetry and that sort of thing. Um, as long as you build your cabinets to accommodate um, kind of how large that light is. It can be a little bit deep, um, quite a bit deeper than what a real life under cabinet light these days would be um, but it does work fairly well for the purposes of of lighting the scene so i've loaded in the recess can light um, i've also loaded in the studio light and as well as the under cabinet light for this scene uh, these are the studio lights um, right here that you'll see and the way that I use these I use these as fill lights essentially what they are is they do not show up as a source um, they essentially the center of that that kind of sphere um, that they've got there is the point where it emits the light but you will not see the actual source of the light it just illuminates around it um, in some capacity uh, I use these as our as like I said as fill lights because the overhead lights tend to not illuminate the scene as well as they would normally <clears throat> excuse me um, so I use those in that capacity and then I can move them up and down you don't want to get those too close to any one surface because it'll leave a nice hot spot on the wall or on whatever it's really close to um, I tend to do different heights on these so you'll see the ones that are back here I kind of have at sort of a three four foot um, that way I don't get really dark shadows underneath here. This allows the light to kind of penetrate underneath here and fill in some of that ambient light underneath there. And then this I kind of split the difference between the ceiling and the floor level so I don't get a real bright spot on the ceiling or the floor. Uh, and it kind of illuminates the scene a little bit better. Um, but then if I go to level two here, you can see I've got, I kind of have two versions of this bar. So we're looking at this one over here, but uh, I kind of space my my cam lights out a little bit. Um, you'll notice that your cam lights you have a couple different options. You've got six inch, eight inch. You can change the diameters, uh, the 277 and the 120 volt. Uh, just how much light is being emitted from those. I would recommend always using the 277. You can always dim them down a little bit, uh, but it's better to have too much light than not enough. And I would also tell you in the same vein as too much light is not enough too much have too much light rather than not enough you also want to kind of ration how many light sources you're creating so if you can get away with say 10 6 inch 277s rather than 12 120s do the 277 because the more light sources that you're creating in your scene the longer it takes to render and compute the lighting for it. So if you can get away with fewer light sources and illuminate your scene, absolutely do it. Um, especially if you're going to be rendering. So these are all 6 inch 277 uh, cam lights. And then I don't really do a whole lot to the light itself. I come into edit type, I apply a light bulb material. <coughs> and the reason for that is it will emit light, but it will also still look like it's off if you do not apply a material to it. So I just come in uh, to the material and I apply an appearance. I come up here to replace this asset 
and if I pull this across under appearance library under glass there is one that is called light bulb on right there so if you double click on that it'll apply an illumination um, to that actual material the other thing that is important to note if you use out-of-the-box lighting in Revit all of your renderings are gonna look orange they're gonna look really yellowy orange and like the incandescent lights are just absolutely crazy as far as the color the reason for that is this initial color down here um, what you're looking at initially from these looks something like that uh, can get real obnoxious if you're not sure how to uh, change that out I always tend to default to this daylight white um, it renders colors more naturally and just gives you a better overall look to your scene um, if you want to get real picky you might do your your down lights as this daylight and then do some of your fill lights as a, a slightly warmer um, light but I would never go all the way to the uh, Incandescent. So maybe instead of 6430, you're dropping all the way down. You drop it down to like a 5900 or something like that um, for your fill light. So that way you got a nice even blend and you get a little bit of the warmth of the artificial light, uh, but not too much to to offset your your textures and materials that you spent time kind of creating and getting those where you want. <coughs> so I go in and change that that initial color for every light that I use so that includes my fill lights here so if I go back to my my perspective here all of these uh, studio lights have I've come in and changed those to the 6430 as well just so that everything is all the same same color the same can be said I have a couple um, under cabinet lights in here that are illuminating these these little uh, display boxes I've done the same thing for those um, and changed those to 6430 as well um, you'll notice I have I have studio lights in these pendants um, I created this family <coughs> a while ago I tend to use my I tend to build my uh, light families as generic models rather than as lighting families the reason for that being this gives me a little bit more control with the with the studio lights as opposed to having the light source built into the family um, I can adjust where this light is within within the family itself so I can move this up and down in here uh, so maybe I want a little more spread out of out of the light so I can move that down so that it, it emits from this point if I want more of a, a kind of direct spotlight effect I can move it up into the tube a little bit more um, right now what I've got is these sitting about halfway but I also have a translucent material applied to to the tube portion of this light so that way it glows a little bit and I get a, a nice kind of even spread of light illuminated from that translucent material so in terms of an introduction to lighting that's a that's a decent kind of overview of it there's there's plenty of light fixtures that you can use for different things um, but the main things to be aware of are you're going to need some fill lights and studio lights are great for that and make sure that you're checking your your initial color options down here those are the big differences that you can get into um, and, and cause yourself some problems if you're not aware of those options so that's an introduction to just lighting and lighting the scene in Revit.